Hi folks, this is Steve, the Cardboard Cultist, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at Clank in space. And this is a re-implementation of 2016's Clank. So throughout this video, I'll be making a lot of comparisons between Clank and Clank in space. So if you're not familiar with the core mechanics of Clank, I'd recommend you take a look at one of the many how to play videos for Clank, and then head back here to see what's changed. So instead of heading into a Dragon's Lair, this time players will be heading into Lord Eradicus' spaceship, and they'll need to hack their way into his command module and steal one of his artifacts before hopefully escaping via one of four escape pods. Now you've probably already noticed one of the primary differences between Clank and Clank in space, and that's this modular game board we're playing on. Now the cargo bay, where players start their adventure, and the command module, where all the artifacts are located, are always fixed. But the three modules in the centre of the game board can be moved around however you like. They're also double-sided, so this is going to give you plenty of replay value. Now we can't simply head into the command module, grab an artifact and get out. We're first going to have to hack our way into two data ports on two different modules. And this is going to secure us a command code, giving us access to that command module and the artifacts. And those data ports that we need to hack are those green tags that you'll see located on some of the spaces on those central modules. So what this does is eliminate the opportunity to get a quick smash and grab on a low level artifact. And because we need to hack our way into the command module, we need to think a little bit more about our early movement in Clank in space. But to help us get around the board a little faster, there's both a hyperlift and telepads available. The hyperlift is running through those central modules and can be great for getting around the board quickly. Although don't rely on them too much, Lord Eradicus is sure to shut them down in the late game. And if that's not enough for you, you can also purchase a telepass and use those telepads located all over the ship to zip around the board. Now in the late game, you're also going to have to contend with Lord Eradicus's bounty hunters. And these are represented by the red cubes over on that boss track. Now when these enter the game, they're going to act like regular clank cubes. But the big difference is, if they get drawn from the bag, everybody's going to take damage. And what's worse, after they're drawn, they're going to go straight back in that bag. And the final thing I want to talk about is the cards themselves. Clank in Space has done away with those single-use items, and in place of the companions, you're now going to find factions. Cards that share a faction type can be used to trigger special abilities, and this is really fun when deck building, because you can really start to tailor your deck to specific factions. And now, I guess it's time for the important question. Is Clank in Space better than the original? And I guess the short answer is yes it is. Clank in Space offers lots of subtle improvements over the original that help make it a better gaming experience. That said, these changes do come at a cost. Not only is complexity increased, but the board is just a little busier, and this is something you really need to consider if playing with more casual gamers. Here's some footage from the original game, and I'm sure you'll agree, the board just looks a little cleaner and things are a little bit easier to process. So while Clank in Space may be the better game, if you're still enjoying the original, don't worry, you're not missing out on too much. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of what to expect from Clank in Space, but until next time, as always, take care and thanks for watching.